Have you had a good time? Oh, yes. What size give God my week? Hey, what is that? Spirit. This is how the church works together. Amen. This is how different people do different parts, different things. I want to want to use a scenario, and I'll of course be in the Bible and get back to the Bible. But I want to use the world today as we see it, and I want to focus on the word of all. That's when we we all come together. In one mind, one body, one accord. All. Now, in this world we live in today, there's a lot of people that come together, but they're not all in the same mind. Not all in the same. It's like a football game. I'm not saying the church is or spiritually. But you have thousands of people in the stadiums, and some are rooting for West Virginia, of course. Amen. <laughs> the first amen. time I ever heard of Amen out of you. <laughs> now, think in the thousands of these people, though, there's another team that other people, but they're all there together for one football game. Or in softball, we know our granddaughter plays softball, and there's teams playing, there's moms, dads, grandparents, brothers, sisters, they're all there for that one particular team or that person on that team to do well. Now what I'm bringing up in the scripture is, it's not his will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Not God's will that any in this world of thousands of people we see everywhere, different places, different times, it's not God's will that any would perish, but that all would come to repent. Amen. If I go back to a little bit of the day of Pentecost and touch a little bit along with with the message. In the day of Pentecost, it came all the way back out of back. And if you look into the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and you see all the things that they were doing for the day of Pentecost, Pentecost meaning 50 days in the times of sacrifice or seven weeks of seven days, which is 49 days. And then there's the 50th day, which is Pentecost. What I'm getting to, though, in all of this rituals of time, you know that Jesus Christ and his resurrection and death, burial, resurrection, and all the Easter and everything goes back to the day of Pentecost. I want to bring this point out in a couple things that we get into the book of Acts, as Brother Danny touched on a little bit about baptism. And in the book of Acts of chapter 1, John truly baptized with water. But there shall come one after him, which is Jesus, who shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, there's two baptisms, one of those two. And we all know or have been to the baptisms of the water. And we've talked about the baptisms of some people that were children, young ages. And But what about the Holy Spirit of God that makes you move and have your being? I've actually heard people say they've been in church all their life. And then somewhere along the line, maybe they would be saved to, give their heart to the Lord and wish they'd done it sooner. Have you, how many times have you heard that? I really wish I'd have done it sooner. Amen. You did it. That's amazing. That's exactly true. Because along with believing in Christ and He forgives you of your sin, you have regrets of the things you did in the past. But the wonderful 
wonderful thing about Jesus Christ is that when you come to Him, when you're heavy, laden, burdened down, when you come to Him, He will give you rest and He will cast those sins into the outer depths of the sea to be remembered no more. Amen. That's why He has this gift that comes within you of the Holy Spirit to make you walk in a newness of life. Why? Wow. You don't even hate the things you really hate. Isn't that true? That's true. When I was converted, I quit hating the things and the people and the grudges that I had to others because it was a relief to ask Him to come into my life that I could cast my cares on Him for He cared for me. This is about being saved. Not just being forgiven, but not having that torment that's in your heart that, you know what, here's the way I see it. God is going to give them theirs just as soon as he's going to give me mine. My hope through him is eternal life. And for the people that's done wrong, continue to do wrong, or hate me, they can still hate me because their reward is not the reward I'm going to give. That's right. My reward is in heaven. In this verse or the things that we get about in the church, as I said, there's a team that's rooting for one team and another one for another. But Jesus comes on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. They were there as one mind, one body, and one accord. I've said this so often when we get into the church. We need to leave the things that bother us behind and press forward in what God has for us in the future. One mind, one body, one accord. Is that not a beautiful thought? Amen. When we get back over in Acts chapter 1, they were gathered together, the disciples, and they were going to choose another follower because Judas had, had forsaken the Lord and they're choosing Matthias as another follower of Christ. But when that day of Pentecost comes, there's at least 120 people there. Why? Waiting on a promise that God said through Jesus Christ, there would be a gift given in this world, a gift of a Spirit of God that would separate you from all the things you ever hated, all the regrets you ever did, if you would believe in Him, take Him in your heart, confess your sins before Him, that He will save you from your sin, and then everybody else has got to deal with their own. Amen. Amen. To save you. This calling that God is calling the individual to be saved is for you. You might think, oh, I wish somebody else would get it. Well, I don't wish, but I would pray that my children, the people that we disagree with, that we would all be saved. Right. All be saved. But we can only be saved by grace, through faith, not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Amen. That's what the Bible says. I can't save me. I can say I'm sorry. And some people do, whether they mean it or not. <laughs> In this time of the Acts chapter 2, let's remember, though there's 120 there, there are devout men from under every nation, place. There's people just everywhere. When that Holy Spirit come into the law. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I tell you. When he comes into your life, don't worry about what somebody else is going to think. Because you don't even think about what somebody else is going to think. When the Lord comes into your life, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Man, I thank God I got this. Man, I thank God I got this. Oh, I thank God. I can't take back everything I ever saw with, oh, thank God he Thank God Jesus come into my life. I don't hate that ex anymore. I wish her the best, but thank God I ain't got her. (laughs) 
He's still working on me. Thank God I still got a neighbor. Like Jeannie Tabor, thank God I love all my neighbors. The one I didn't like moved away. <laughs> When we come together, when we get it together, all one mind, one body, one accord, we'll find somebody we really love. Yeah. We'll find the people that God sent us, the church. We'll find the body that sticks together. We'll find the body that's hooked to a head. And he's the head and we're the body. Amen. And when the head makes the body move, it'll give you a being inside you that says, I love being a part of the body. If I can just be that little crooked finger, it's still my body. All right, baby. God built this church for people. He created the whole world for people. But we become a separate people, not to hate people, but that we can help other people be a part of the people. Listen, if we disgrace, look. Jesus died for the rich, the poor, the blind, the beggar, the thief. He didn't come for a prophet in the world. He came to save people from their sins and give them a hope of eternal life. Eternal life. Wow. Wow. You see... Back in the old Bible, we talk about Israel today. You know, Jesus being born a Jew or Israel and Bethlehem of Judea and Israel came to his own and his own received him not. And we see today the war that Israel has with what is called Hamas. That's Palestine. Yeah. Yeah. David, being of Israel, killed the giant. A Palestinian. Things don't really change a lot in life. And I'll tell you one thing that's not going to change. God will never change. Amen. God's word is here for today, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. He's not going to change. And when God prophesied that he would send Jesus Christ, he said he would send this world a Savior. Wow. So there's a church. Let me tell you, when you get into the scriptures, and they were all filled and whew, on the day of Pentecost, they were awaiting a promise that Jesus gave them to be baptized of the Holy Ghost. And when that promise was fulfilled, I tell you, they were all filled. <coughs> wow. And them bunch of foreigners, we would call them and didn't like each other. Once they got it all together, they even understood the other tongues of every nation and every language. Listen, he brought it all together and he got rid of all the confusion that was in the body and he made it built a church. Amen. The church. Not the Advent, not the Baptist, not the man. He built a church of the living God. Amen. I'm in the church. Amen. I'm in the body. But I thank God he's the head. Amen. We can do this together. Woo. <laughs> in the book of Acts, Here's Peter and John. Now they've already they've received this gift of the Holy Spirit. And about 120, it says about, had received that gift. And they were talking in other tongues. And the people that were outside, they like thinking, man, this is a bunch of drunks. 
Oh, I've been drunk. <laughs> I meant, wait a minute, you have to, you laughed the loudest. I know. <laughs> but now I'm filled with a new wine. It makes me do a lot of different things like it did when I was drunk. But now that I've got this new wine, I do a whole lot of different things than I used to do on the old wine. I walk in the newness of life. I go to different places. I'm friend with other people. I like the gospel of the truth that saved me, cast those sins into the outer depths of the sea. I thank God that I have something I never had. We pass from death unto life because we love one another. Amen. We care about that person that hurt our feelings. We care about that person that we hate. We care, and it is so good. I don't want to be selfish, but Lord, I wish everybody had what I had. Not like I got it to make me special, but doesn't it feel good to go to bed at night and not hate nobody? Yes. Not hold a grudge against anybody? Okay, God, they're yours. I couldn't do nothing with them. <laughs> wow. Love them from afar, too. Wow, afar. Yeah. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John are walking past this beautiful gate. And there's this man there, a beggar, can't walk. They carried him there. He's asking for money. Here's what John, Peter and John, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Wow. That's what I say to the lost. In the name of Jesus, people need to just rise up and walk in the newness of life. Amen. Amen. Just rise up and walk. Wow, I tell you, you know, I've heard a story about people just talking and going on about the church, you know. I like that part where he says he believed God. Yeah, oh, I ain't done yet. <laughs> I don't look for no dive of resolve here. <laughs> and all these people were just carrying on and this man stands up and he begins to testify. And it kind of quietens everybody else down because now the Lord's done got all over him. It ain't just babbling about what I done or what somebody else or how rich he is or whatever. This man begins to testify about the Lord Jesus Christ. And this man, he leaped up, he was shouting, and he was praising God, and they couldn't shut him up. Real good. They couldn't shut. He was happy. Amen. He said, all I know is this. I couldn't walk. Or another one said, I know I was blind, but now I see. And I couldn't walk. And look at me. <laughs> they got them dances out today. I tell you, I see them sometimes flipping through the TV. I think they're more on cripple than ripple. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> no, Paulette. No. <laughs> and you know what they do? Same day on Pentecost. They're all talking in a different tongue and understanding everybody's language. And here sets these people over here. Man, they're drunk. Wonder where they got that from. <laughs> ain't it true? Man, hey, I can't understand a word for saying. You know why? They didn't get the gift. They didn't get You know why some people can't understand the church? They didn't get it. That's why some people, listen, when, when God saves you, he puts you in places where you succeed where you could never have done it by yourself. Just couldn't do it. And if it wasn't for good people, God-fearing, praying people, praying for the people that are still praying like we did today, 
and coming together in unity and love, if it wasn't for the people, there would be no church. Amen. God sent his son to save the people. That's what he cares about. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He cares about the people. The people. So he gave us a promise. And he titled it the comfort. Why? In those times you were alone in your bed and you were crying and thinking the worst could happen, that comfort will come. When you're concerned about your children, your friends, and you're hoping and praying they'll come back to the Lord or they'll be saved, that comfort will come. He just seeks right in. Steph had a good testimony. Don't become weary in well-doing. But when trouble comes, I've got the trouble solved. Amen. When, the, when the sacrifice that he gave for us, all he wants is you. He don't need your money. All he wants is you. He's not asking for you to do something special for him. He's wanting to do something special for you. God sent his son into the world that through and by his name people can be saved. God sacrificed his own son to pay his life on Calvary that you could give him your life. Life. Man, I tell you, I'll take the life sentence of eternity. Wow. You ever think about people, God for help, that have a life sentence in prison? You know God can still save them? Amen. God can still save them. But I got a life sentence. Eternal. Amen. <laughs> and there's some other people who got a life sentence. Eternal damnation. Choose what you believe. I tell you, this spirit's real. This spirit is here because he gave me a promise. <laughs> wow. They killed Jesus Christ. And willing hanging on a cross, bowed his head. Forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. That's tough. And I'll tell you why it's tough. It's hard. People deserve what they do wrong. Thank you. But they got to come the same way everybody else does. You got your problem. I'll help you if I can. But God is our help in a very time of need. And I would ask you or anybody here where you go to when it really gets tough. Where do you go? But to the Lord. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Not to be anything more than what God asked you to do. But you've got to ask Him to forgive you. You have to ask to receive. This is the message today. Hey, I gotta say this thing. I like your hair. <laughs> if you got any for learn, <laughs> I just thought I'd get that over. <laughs> it distracts me every time I fall. I love you. I had for a while. I don't know if it started falling from the bottom up or from the top down. <laughs> you got any left in pass on this way. I love you. God would have to love you more than me to give you hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'll listen to you. <laughs> if you want to be a blonde, I'm getting a haircut too. <laughs> <laughs> a thinning. 
She's rubbing it in. <laughs> I don't pick on her too much. She gets mad too. Oh. <laughs> Boy, I had one in my mind. God wouldn't let me say it. I'm gonna tell the wife when we go home in the car. I really had one. <laughs> oh, but it wasn't for Linda. <laughs> Church. You know, laughter is a good medicine. While we were enjoying the service, all those things that God wants to forgive us of, they didn't mean nothing. All those things that we brought through the week or the day or the months that weariness, us, when the Spirit moved in, all that moved out. That's where He wants to keep us, in a spiritual mind. Then we don't have to deal with all that bird flying over your head Making a nest in your hair and laying eggs, whatever you else That's why you work it out. You see, when he comes in, old things are passed away. All things become new. That water, like Ethel said, I'm going to give you a warning. I didn't know she wanted to be baptized that day. And she said, I want to be baptized. <laughs> Let's do it. I said, this is the experience of that. I said, hey, I got a new pair of shoes on. <laughs> you want to get in the Elk River? <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> wow. When that spirit moves, yeah. when he calls, when he calls, you better listen. When the Spirit calls, you better listen. Because <clears throat> people look on the outer appearance. God looks on the heart. It's not His will. He wants us all. Let's stand. Let's stand for just a moment. Anybody got anything to say? Before we dismiss... Let me say this. This altar now is it's always open. And I'm gonna ask one thing of you. All of you. To bow your head and pray. And if you're lost <coughs> and you ask the Lord to come into your heart, He'll move you to come up. If you're lost. If you have something else on your heart while we pray, while we bow our head, if someone comes up, then the Lord brought him here. That's it. You didn't just show up. Any comments? Sweet, sweet spirit today. Feeling very strong. He's not looking on the outer appearance. He's looking on your home. Let's bow our head. You pray your prayer. You can pray it silent. You can pray it open. You can ask the Lord to come into your life. But don't ask him to leave you alone. What can you do for him? What can you do? Would you please come up? Would you come up and let me pray with you? Please, for what he's brought you through and the crowd he's brought you, could you please just come up one time? Try. A sweet, sweet spirit. making this journey a lot. The Lord brings you up. Don't make it too late. You want it all. <clears throat> wow, what a day. What a day.
Okay, somebody volunteered to dismiss the service. We'll stay here praying. Someone wants to come on up a later date. Instead of exiting out that door, you might exit up this way. Instead of leaving, you'll enter in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll keep, come on, Spark. That's the way we'll dismiss. Come on up, Spark. Come on up. <clears throat> Here's one of our main men. While they're praying, we're still good. We're still good. We ready for this one?